for the Word of God. Marty, want to sing? All right, we're going to have a song right quick. Come on, Marty. Amen. You got it ready? Oh, God, you fired up and ready to go. All right. Go ahead. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Hey, man. Because of Calvary. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. You're everything to me. Hey, man. That's good. Appreciate that. All right. I hope that's your testimony tonight. Uh, if you love the Lord, say amen. amen. Now tonight, what I'm going to say affects every person in here. You, your family, and it is for every person in here. The worst thing you can possibly do when I start preaching is turn me off and say, that's for everybody else. That's the biggest mistake you can make. No matter what I'm preaching on, there's something in it for every one of us. So don't do it. Open up your ears and heart and say, Lord, I'm not just going to be a hearer of the word, but a doer. We begin tomorrow our fast for the youth rally. I'm going to hit it a little bit different maybe than I have before and explain to you what the Bible says about fasting. Matthew chapter number 6, look at verse number 16. Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 16. Moreover, Jesus said, when, underline that word, when ye fast. He didn't say if you fast. He didn't say, moreover now, if you ever decide to fast, remember this, he said, when. The Lord took it for granted that everybody, sometime or another, would fast. You may not fast as long, you may not fast as much as others, but everybody from time to time, needs to fast, physically, mentally, and especially spiritually. The definition of fast is not give up chocolate for a week. That is not fasting. That, there's no such thing as that in the Bible. There's no such thing as Lent in the Bible. The Bible definition and the medical definition of fasting is not eating, not eating food. Uh, and liquids, there's some, some debate about. But I'm going to show you that in the Bible too. So the Lord said, when ye fast. Not if, when ye fast. Be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance. For they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have the reward. You know what he said here? He said, them hypocrites, when they fast, they purposely disfigure their face so that people will know they're fasting and think, and they can get glory somehow. So they come in like that. And somebody said, are, are you all right? Well, I'm just fasting for the glory of God. Uh, uh, no, you're fasting for your own glory, and that's all the reward you're going to get. In other words, you are wasting your time. He said, don't disfigure faith. He said, you jump up, put a smile on your face, comb your hair and brush your teeth, and say, whoo, Hallelujah even though your stomach may be gnawing, wanting something to eat. That's what he said in the next verse. He said, uh, "Wash, anoint thine head, wash thy face, so that people don't know it. And it's in secret. And your father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Now, it's okay like I'm doing to proclaim a fast in front of a whole crowd of people. They did it throughout the Bible in the Old Testament. But you are not supposed to go around telling people, I'm fasting. They say, we're going to go, oh no, I'm fasting. Just say, no. Uh, and if they push you, say, not eating today. No, don't say I'm not hungry, because that's a lie. Say, I'm just not eating today, and if they push you, it's all right to tell them, but you're not supposed to push it, and so you can tell them. Everybody understand that? You're not supposed to, when they say, uh, we're all going out to lunch, you want to go? It's lunchtime, we get an hour here at work, say, uh, no, I can't. I'm so dedicated that I'm praying for our youth rally. Uh, yeah, that's a waste of time. That's a waste of time. So you tell them, uh, you say, no, thank you. I, I won't be going today. Uh, no, thank you. I, I, can't, I'm, uh, I won't be able to go today. Something like that. And, uh, and you can do it. You can do it. I said this morning, the only way that you can fast is make up your mind that you're going to do it. It's the hardest thing in the Christian life for me is fasting. The second hardest is praying. 
Real praying is hard work. And fasting is, is even harder for me. But over 80 times in the Bible, you almost never hear a preacher preach on the subject of fasting. I wonder how long it's been, probably since I did it last year, since you heard a whole sermon on the subject of fasting. And yet it's 80 times in the Bible. 80 times. I wonder if, if, if in a big mega church on TV, if the preacher ever gets up and say, folks, we need revival. Some of y'all got kids out there on drugs. Some of you having marriage problems. We need God to move in our church. Everybody, let's pray and fast. You ain't gonna hear it. It's all wonderful, glory to God. He is so awesome. Everything's great. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a false philosophy and a false spirit. In the Bible, they fasted. I tell you, one of the saddest things I've seen, I've been in preacher's meetings before, and most preachers look like they need to fast bad. Amen? Most of them. That's sad. I've had people tell me before, they said, you can't be a preacher. And I said, they, I, said I am. They said, you can't be. Uh, you got to be this, you got to be, and one of the things, you know. Uh, and I said, no, uh, uh, you don't have to be. And you know what? I've been in preacher's meeting before, and a preacher got up and said, I'm going to preach on praying and fasting, and they'll punch each other and laugh and joke about it. And they'll say, <laughs> I tell you what, you, 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 you fast, I'll pray and joke about it. And that's why most of their churches don't have enough power of God to blow a spiritual booger out of their nose. Now, I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, you, we, if we're going to see God move, if, if we even want to see God move, I mean, do you even want God? Don't you have kids in your family that need God? Don't you, have, don't you know girls that's on drugs? Don't you know kids that uh, people that are marriage about to break up? They're kids rebellious? I mean, if you don't, you... You, you're, you're living under a rock somewhere. People's lives are messed up. People's hearts are torn to pieces. People have physical needs, spiritual needs. Uh, uh, our lives are being torn apart by the devil. And there is only one power that can break that power on a drug addict. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. And Brother Jesus said, That kind comes forth not but by prayer and fasting. Matthew 17, 21. <laughs> now, excuse me. I'm going to talk about it this morning. And... Um, it's after grace. Acts chapter 10, 1 Corinthians. Paul said, in fastings often. For you that just believe it's Old Testament. Paul did it. In our generation, instead of eating to live, we live to eat. The first sin in the Bible by a human being was eating. You know that, right? And they say the way to a man's heart is what? To his stomach, and say, uh, and so uh, they, you, well, you, you know what? Hot Eve got Adam to do, tempted him with the fruit, with eating. You know what the devil did when he came to Jesus? What was the first temptation the devil threw at Jesus Christ? Turn that rock uh, into bread and eat. Feed this body. Feed this flesh. So I'm going to talk about fasting tonight, and I'm going to talk about food, and I'm going to talk about, I'm going to bring you a message uh, sometime in the future about food, what and how a Christian should eat. Uh, just as soon as I get my eating habits straight so I won't feel like a hypocrite. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, we're, we're going to talk about in the Bible, there are three types of fast. Number one, there is what we call a supernatural fast. That means it cannot be done except from supernatural power of God. The perfect illustration is Moses. The Bible said the man Moses went up on the Mount of uh, Mount uh, Sinai, and he went up there, and he's on that mountain, and he's up there with God forty days and forty nights, buddy. And he didn't eat, he didn't drink for forty days and forty nights. That's, that's supernatural. You've got to have something to drink. You can go without food forty days, but not not. Not drink. Somebody said they can't. I know, I know at least one, two, three, four, five, five or six people that have fasted 40 days. Uh, some are here in our own church. Now, I got two, two or three preacher friends of mine. I have one preacher friend of mine uh, in California who fasted. First time he fasted 40 days, he lost 57 pounds. He, he, uh, he looked like a different person. You didn't even recognize him. And he, he come in, he, he was a different man. And the power of God settled down on his ministry like never before. I know another one that did the same thing. But Moses was a supernatural fast. He came down from the mountain, and the Bible said he went down there 
there, and the children of Israel was all backslid, and they was all dancing around, had rock music playing, and they was going crazy, and he took them ten, he got so mad, he slammed them things down like that, and the Ten Commandments, he's the only man in the Bible that broke all Ten Commandments at one time, and but bam, them things shattered all out like that, and the Bible said Moses went over there, and God turned him around, he went right back up there 40 more days and 40 nights, and I don't know if there's any time in there, if there wasn't, that's 80 days, if there was, it wasn't much, 80 days and nights with no food or drink, that is a supernatural fast, and then secondly, there is an absolute fast in the Bible, what is an absolute fast? An absolute fast is when you have a spiritual emergency. It means when somebody's had a heart attack, the kid got hit by a car, something terrible's happened, and you've got to have God. That, that's an absolute fact. No water, no food. Sometimes just for a day or so. And these kinds of fasts are mentioned in Ezra, Esther chapter 4 and verse 16. And uh, also there's one in the book of Acts. And there's one in Jonah, in Jonah chapter 3, where they fasted and didn't eat or drink, and God had mercy and spared Nineveh. And the, the classic illustration is Esther there, when she was going into the, uh, into the king, and she said, now everybody fast for me. Don't eat nothing, don't drink nothing, and I'm going in, and if I perish... I perish. That's an absolute fast. That means when you've got to have God, you uh, listen. There's, there can there can be some things happen in your life where that you don't even want to eat. You don't even think about food. You're so tore up. You've got to have a miracle. I mean, brother, when somebody you love's laying there and they're hooked up to a machine and they could die any minute or something like that happen, you say, God, I don't have an appetite. God, I I want you. God, give us a miracle. That's an absolute fast. Then thirdly, and this is what we'll be doing the next 40 days, there's what you call partial fast, and that is water. No food, water, or some kind of liquid uh, uh, that's between you and the Lord. This is Hannah. This is Daniel, chapter 10, for 21 days. This is uh, uh, over in Elijah, this uh, Acts chapter 14, and it is the most common of the fast. In the Bible, there's a 40-day fast, there's a 21-day fast, there's a 14-day fast, there's a 7-day fast, there's a 3-day fast, and a 1-day fast. The 1-day fast is the most common by far. And they say, they say that after the third day, I've never fasted more than three days, so I couldn't tell you this, but I've had a lot of people tell me. Uh, Brother Wayne told me one night, he's, he's went on some long fast, 14 days, stuff like that. And they say that after the third day, the hunger pains are gone, and it, from then on, it's just a cleansing of mind and body and spirit. Now tonight, we're going to take a little time. This isn't fun. This isn't something we can all shout about. I don't see nobody about ready to blow up and throw your hands up in there and say, glory to God. You know why? Because this flesh don't like it. This flesh likes to be fed. This flesh likes to be petted. This flesh likes to have what it wants. Does yours say amen? You know good and well your flesh likes, it likes its comfort, it likes its nice warm bed, it, you, you can't stand it less than 68 degrees and more than 71 degrees, I mean you burn up, you freeze to death, you've got to have your toes covered up, uh, you, you feel one little, most of you go ahead and eat before you ever feel a hunger pain, uh, lest you might feel one just a little bit. I'm just going to go ahead and eat anyway. But first thing in the morning, eat. Last thing at night, eat. All in between, eat, snack, eat, snack, eat, snack, eat. I sure don't want to feel no hunger pain. So I understand that. I'm the same way. Uh, we have addiction. We have addiction to starch. We have addiction to caffeine. We have addiction to sugar. And uh, and your body gets addicted to that wanting that stuff. Now I'm not going to preach on this tonight, but did you know that you can, your body can be trained to uh, to like different kinds of food in other countries where they just eat rice and, and bamboo and stuff like that, uh, the, some of the way they fix it and flavor it, it to them that tastes just as good as a T-bone steak mixed up, which means, I ain't got time to preach on this, but if all you do is go to Olive Garden and Steakhouse and have big, good, nice meals, uh, you get your body you get your body addicted to that type of food, uh, you, you, you can't eat a tomato sandwich no more, and that's bad. 
And so tonight, we, we got to learn uh, what a partial fast is. In Isaiah 58 and verse 4, it shows wrong motives of fasting. You don't fast to appear unto men. You don't fast just to show off. You don't fast as the hypocrites do. You fast because it is biblical. And here's why you fast. You fast so that our, our heart can be cleansed so God's power may rest upon us. Matthew chapter 9, Jesus told them, he said, uh, uh, the, the, the guys can't fast as long as the bridegroom's with you. But when the bridegroom's taken from you, then shall they fast in those days. Paul in 2 Corinthians said, I am in fastings often in this dispensation. We are digging our graves with a fork and a spoon. Ladies and gentlemen, Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 17 even hints to the fact that a person can be drunk on food. Well, you sort of get, just get out. You eat that stuff, you know, you really can't. That's why I don't, uh, when I go preach, some people say, uh, let's take you out to supper, preacher. And I say, I'd really rather not eat right before church. I don't like to eat before I preach. You feel drunk. What do you want to do when you, after you eat? Lay down and take a nap. You don't feel like preaching. I say, I'll go after church tonight and we'll go. Because so food makes you droggy. And food makes you sort of, you know, sleepy. You have a siesta after you eat lunch during the day. That's right. That's what they do in, mo in a lot of countries. Now, what the Bible says about fasting, God's fast accomplishes several things. Now, let me ask you, does anybody in here need these things? And if you do, I'm going to tell you how to get it. It says in Isaiah 58, they are to loose the bands of wickedness. A real fast will loose the bands of wickedness. That means if you've got sin in your heart, how about all you young men and older men? Are you full of lust and you can't get that dirty thoughts out of your mind and all you do is sit up and look at your phone at night and watch trash on TV? And Bill, I tell you what you need to do. You say, well, Brother Danny, I can't help it. My, I just got a dirty mind. You, the Bible said if you'll fast, it will loose the bands of wickedness. The way to quit walking around thinking dirty, filthy thoughts all the time and say no to that flesh, starve the flesh because when you're fasting, you ain't going to be looking at dirty stuff on your phone or on your TV. Ladies and gentlemen, if there's ever been a time when somebody, let's don't give up, y'all. Let's don't give up. Don't give in. I don't want us to become just a normal church where there's no power. I'd like to see God do something in here. How about you? Say amen, y'all. Listen, you undo the loose wickedness. Undo the heavy burdens. You got a heavy burden? Are you burdened for your mama? Are you burdened for your daddy? Are you burdened for your daughter, for your sister, for your brother? Undo the heavy burden. Fast in the way to do it. And it says, let the oppressed go free. Break every yoke. Your mind gets clear. Uh, listen, you can get done. God, get done in 30 seconds. Whatever bit of counseling in the world can't get done. You know what I'd love to see in our church services here over there at the youth rally? Wouldn't you like to see the Holy Ghost of God move in there and say, well, I mean, nothing worked up, nothing pumped up. No, not where you have to have a certain group singing or a certain man preaching or, or anything. I mean, I'm all for all that and we're going to have all that. But wouldn't you like to see God, the Holy Ghost, get a hold of young people's heart and shake them down to the their core so that they'd want to live right when mom and daddy ain't around. Well, listen, brother, that's what God will do. You know what? The revival I got saved in, there's a woman up there in Nebo, and she fasted three days and three nights for all of us young people, and I didn't know it. I didn't know. I'd seen her. She's about, she was a, a lot older woman. Uh, there's an 84-year-old in the Bible woman fasted regularly in Luke chapter 2. So it ain't going to kill you old people. Uh, and, uh, and you know what? Uh, by the way, go into a rest home. Go into a rest home. Go look at them people in there. Every one of them, old people skinny, all of them. Where's the other ones? Uh, they died. Uh, I'm going to tell you something, brother. Listen, I'm going to tell you something this evening. Uh, that woman prayed and fasted for three days, and when she got done, God said, go three more. And she fasted six days and nights. And I was uh, driving down the road in my little old car and felt something pulling me toward that church. What was that? Now, I'd never felt that before. And I heard one of my friends got saved. And I went to that revival. And brother, somebody, I, the preacher didn't even preach. 
There's a group up singing. And something was pulling on me. What was that? Who was that? That was the Holy Ghost. Do you know what that comes from? That does not come from having a Hillsong group come in. That does not come from having an educated or gifted or charismatic preacher in the pulpit. That comes from somebody. Somebody laying up paying a price. Some wearing a prayer closet on their face before God and begging God until the Holy Ghost loose the bands of wickedness in somebody. I'm telling you tonight, people, I know what the answer is. We just got to be willing to pay a price for God to do something in our church. In our youth rally. Amen. Wrong motives will not get it done. Programs and plans won't get it done. Skits won't get it done. Funny stuff won't get it done. Hot dogs won't get it done. Motorcycle jump won't get it done. Only God's power is what will get a hold. Now think about when you got saved. What got a hold of you? It wasn't somebody's talent. It wasn't somebody being witty and telling funny stories. It was the Holy Ghost. That's what got a hold of me. In Judges chapter 20, they prayed and nothing happened. They prayed and wept and nothing happened. They prayed and fasted in verse 26 until evening and God heard and gave them the victory. And they just fasted till evening at 6 o'clock. They just fasted till 6 o'clock in the evening. They didn't eat nothing all day long. Prayed and got a hold of God. And listen, listen if, I ain't a doctor, but I'm telling you, if you're a diabetic, you can fast a little while. You sure can. It, and I'm not telling you too longer than a little while. But if you do what God tells you to, it ain't going to kill you. Amen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, in 1 Kings chapter 21, uh, they said, you know what? God said, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do it. Uh, they fasted. God was going to judge this outfit. And they prayed and fasted. And the Lord said, well, I've done said I'm going to do it. So I've got to do it. But I won't do it in their time. I'll do it in their their." They're later on in the next generation time. He put off the judgment of God because somebody fasted. Amen? Instead of fasting and praying, we're feasting and playing. We got the victory over our physical appetite that God's power may rest upon us. Deuteronomy 8, 3. Deuteronomy 11. Verse 11, verse 14. It's hard to pray and read your Bible and live right with a full stomach all the time. Job said, I esteem the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. In Luke chapter 18, the Pharisee talked about it. In Luke chapter 2, the lady that I talked to you about a minute ago, 84 years old, stayed in the temple and prayed and fasted. Do you know what the sin of Sodom was? The sin of Sodom was pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness. Full belly, think your hot stuff, and nothing to do. And that's what the sin of Sodom was. That'll turn a group into homosexuals or a nation. Jesus said, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. That's what he said. They come to the Lord and they said, Lord, ain't you going to eat nothing today? He said, I've got meat to eat that you know not of. Listen, there's been times when I fasted and the Lord moved and I thought, and somebody said, ain't you hungry? And I, I felt like saying that. Man, I'm eating meat that the world don't know anything about. Seeing God move, seeing, I, I've, I've seen the youth rally before and, and the devil said, now Danny, you've got to be strong because it's 90 degrees and you've got to preach and you need physical strength so you should eat. And I said, no, I told the Lord I was going to fast and God, I'd rather have your power than be strong and when I get up and start preaching honest to goodness it feels like I can take this pulpit and throw it through that wall over there it, there's, there's strength come from somewhere else it's unbelievable it's absolutely unbelievable you think clearer your body is clean You're, it's, it's guaranteed to help you physically that ain't why you do it but it is absolute the best way to cleanse your body physically now if you're if you're uh, if you got problems or you're really, really skinny, of course, you just do as God leads you. And you know, you know what I mean? I, there's nothing in the Bible that says how long, how often, but Paul did say he did it often. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll feel better. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll think clearer. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you'll live a better life. Expresses your earnestness. The reason you fast is in 1 Samuel 7, 6, is a repentance from sin in 
a one-day absolute fast. Judges 20 is, is a fast for hell. 1 Samuel 20 is Jonathan for David's uh, safety and ill treatment. When somebody's being mistreated in your family, pray and fast for them. Proclaim a fast. Like Ezra in Ezra chapter 8 and verse 23. He proclaimed a fast. Uh, you, you afflict yourselves. You afflict yourselves. In Acts chapter 14 verse 23, they ordained a preacher and deacons. And the Bible said they prayed and fasted. And the Holy Ghost said, do this, do that. In Isaiah 58 and verse 8, he said, Then shall your light come. Then shall understanding come. Then shall messages come. You say, Pre you say I'm a preacher. God don't never give me a message. I tell you what to do. Get your Bible and go up in the woods and stay all day and don't eat nothing pray. You'll get a message. I'll guarantee you, brother, they'll be coming in so fast. You can't write them all down. It'll do a work. It'll change your life. It'll make you healthier. It'll get the poison out of your body. You ever wonder how come you have a headache when you don't eat? He said, I have to eat, I'll get a headache. Well, that's like a drug addict saying, I've got to have more drugs because I crave them. The reason you have a headache is that poison and junk, caffeine, sugar and everything is, is, is messed up. That's why you got that white junk on your tongue. And, and scratch your tongue, you got old white junk on it. That's poison coming out of you. If you fast a while, I've never fasted that long, they say your tongue get just as pink as a little baby. All the, if you've got a spot on your skin... It just goes away. Ladies and gentlemen, is there something about it? There's something about it. J. Harold Smith, a great pastor. Read that book I've told you about. You can't buy it in the bookstores anymore. They don't sell books like that. But it's called Fast Your Way to Help. You can find it on eBay and order it for about 2 or $3. It's worth $10,000. That is the greatest book on fasting I've ever seen. J. Harold Smith, Fast Your Way to Health. I got one or two copies. I think I got one in my office over there. And brother, he talks about it. He goes into like what a doctor says. He talks about the physical benefits of fasting. He talks about how that it, it does all kind of stuff to your nervous system, mind, your heart, your, your, your blood pressure goes down, your cholesterol goes down. All of that stuff uh, levels out. If you do it regular and, on and, 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 and eat right and all of that, he talks about uh, you finally, uh, the blood, uh, uh, when your blood will leave your, your, wherever, your liver and go fix whatever's wrong with you instead of having to digest food all the time. It'll fix whatever's wrong with your body. Now, I'm not saying you can live forever in this body, but I'm saying it will change your health. And it'll change God's mind. You say, God ain't never changed his mind. Well, I know, but you know what I'm talking about when he said, I'm going to destroy Nineveh. He done said it. Forty days, you're gone. And everybody in Nineveh got down. That's why Jonah got mad, you know. Everybody in Nineveh got down and repented and asked God to help them. The cows, everybody fasted. I think you ought to make your dog fast a little bit for the youth rally. They ain't going to kill it. Dogs can fast. That's why we used to do I don't say, we ain't eating. You ain't either, buddy. <laughs> you can fast for this youth rally. You don't have no burden for nothing. That, you say, oh, that's silly. In the Bible, they got down, the, the sheriff, the, the county commissioners, everybody, the king of Nineveh said, nobody. Cows don't eat nothing. And God, who had pronounced judgment, spared that city. What do you think about that? You think it ain't powerful? I'm going to tell you something, people. You know what y'all's problem is? I'll tell you what your problem is. Your problem is, way bound deep inside, you don't think it's going to make no difference. But I'm telling you, the devil's tricking you. If you'll fast and get a hold of God, God can change some things in your life, in your home, in your kids, in your marriage. I'm not saying everything's going to happen just the way you want it, when you want it. But I'm telling you this, too. God in the Bible done mighty things when people fasted. All right, I'm through. I could tell you story after story after story. I could tell you stories of how God moved in revivals when preachers fasted. I'll never forget hearing preachers tell about how that they'd go to revival one night and they'd be dead and cold. And that night they'd go to their motel room and beg God and lay on their face all night and not eat the next day and go back the next night and it's completely different. It's just like something just breaks. It's like a devil, like God just takes his hand and knocks a devil off of there. Now we've got, 
We've got uh, 40 days from tomorrow. 